This is Wraith from Wraith Rain. I'm an author of serialized gay romance fiction. Every week on this podcast, I'll be reading a chapter from one of my gay fantasy shifter serials called Dragon's Rain. I'll explain at the break how you can find out more about this story and others I write. So let's get to it. Chapter 131, Last Battle. They were flying so fast that the ground beneath them was a blur, but his other senses told him that there was little to see below them, fields of corn and wheat that waved softly under the dying night's last breezes, single-family homes where the lights were mostly out except for a lone garage light or a faint nightlight shining out through gauzy curtains by a child's bedside. If they hadn't been shifted, Caden's eyes would have been watering so badly that he wouldn't have been able to see anyways. A thin, nictating film covered their eyes, something that Caden hadn't realized before. Now he was completely aware of every little difference in their dragon form from their human one. He wanted to memorize every second of it. He'd lost this for a short while, and he never wanted to again. We'll never leave you. Promise. Ayalair cooed softly to him. Right, I know. I just... Are we going to get to the sun in time, Ayalair? Caden pushed the past trauma away for the present one. I can still hear her heartbeat, but it seems weaker than when we started. A lot weaker, actually. In the beginning of their flight, Shioni had actually looked up at them and smiled. She'd given a weak laugh as they'd launched up into the sky. Tilly will be so, so jealous that I get to ride with both of you, she'd rasped out. Phoenixes have wings, Caden. She will fly back with us, Valerius had answered, his voice strong even as his eyes were filled with worry. Oh, I might need some, some resting time before I can keep up with a dragon, even the smallest. If fiercest, Iolair, she'd breathed out. Their heart had thudded heavily in their chest. Both Caden and Iolair could hear how hard she was trying to make them believe she'd be around to fly back. But she didn't think so. They'd flown even faster and covered several hundred miles in less time than Caden had thought possible. But there was no sign of the sun. Caden wondered if they would have to fly all the way to New York City to find it. How far was New York from reach? By car, over 12 hours drive. By plane, about two to four. By dragon? If Raziel was carrying her, she'd already be there. But our wings aren't as strong. Iolair let out a determined twitter, and they made themselves even more aerodynamic by flattening their ears to their head and thinning their form out. They were already keeping their forelimbs tight to their body. He'd smelled dew and fresh-cut grass and the exhaust from car engines when they'd shot over small cities and towns. There had been the bright arteries of highways and airports. They'd even had to dodge some planes a few times, though those were rare at night. One plane, though, had come so close that they'd seen the pilots inside the cockpit pointing fingers at them, mouths open and eyes wide. They looked back after they'd passed to make sure their wake hadn't harmed the aircraft in any way. But the plane was still headed in the right direction at the right altitude. Small faces were pressed to the windows. This red-eye flight would have quite the tale to tell. He hoped it would be one of awe and not terror or sadness. She only must make it, Caden thought. She's still alive. There's still a chance. They chanced to glance down at their passengers. Valerius was practically invisible in their claws. He ducked inside, balling himself up tightly after the first hour. It was cold up here, and he was naked. There was no dragon in his chest to keep him superheated warm, and Iolaire had only ice breath to give. Shioni was wrapped in the foil blanket that gave far more warmth than one would expect but he wasn't sure if that was what allowed her to keep her head and feet somewhat extended from their claws. Her eyes were closed, and her normally dark gold skin was much paler than it should have been. But her heart was still beating. How much longer would it, though? 
He'd never wished they were bigger before. Small but mighty, but with a larger wingspan, more strength to fly, even the ability to send warm heat over Valerius and Shioni with a quick breath would have been better. And their wings were already tiring. Actually, they'd been tiring about 100 miles ago, but they kept flying, kept beating, kept going. But they were much slower than they had been. The ground wasn't a blur any longer. We need Raziel, Caden thought. Iolaire twittered softly in agreement. We have only ourselves. We must keep on, Caden. Yes, we must keep on, Caden agreed. They pumped their exhausted wings and looked for light on the horizon. The behemoth landed heavily behind them. Raziel swung its massive head around, red eyes narrowing. The others did the same. Mephis let out a cloud of green smoke. Light flashed from Everin's eyes, and Zephira reared back and flapped its wings, the air seeming to thicken. The behemoth cringed for just a moment, its dirty yellow eyes widening with fear upon seeing them all there waiting for it. It looked wounded, broken. The wings were battered. Its body was bruised and bloodied. Caden and Iolaire had done well. They had sent the behemoth back. But at what cost? That was not a thought that Raziel had ever had before. Victory was all that had ever mattered. If others died because they happened to get in the way of a battle, so be it. That was the cost of its protection and strength. But now, Raziel felt differently. Its stomach nodded at the thought of any of its people being hurt, and Raziel knew that the behemoth had taken lives. It could smell the blood and death on it. Not Iolaire's, not Valerius's, but human lives and maybe some shifters too. These beings depended upon it and the other dragons to protect them. They would never take that lightly again. We will never let our guard down again, Zipple hissed. Its flame-like eyes were narrowed to slits and magma dripped from its snarling claws. There will have been losses, Sola admitted softly, even as clouds gathered above them for a storm. This should never have happened. Our enemy is now exposed. We will not forget, Zephira intoned. Its wings quivered and the air smell of ozone. We will make the behemoth pay for every life lost, Mephis snarled. Poisonous gas flowed along the ground in green waves towards the behemoth. The behemoth shifted its forelimbs as the green smoke curled around it and then it let out a hiss as the poison scalded its scales. But then it lifted its head and spread its wings to make itself look bigger and unconcerned. You've come to destroy me. You waited to destroy me, the behemoth asked with an almost chuckle. You are done, behemoth, Everin slammed its tail against the ground. You won't hurt anyone, dragons or people, anymore, Lana cried as she rose up by Elderon. The gold dragon looked askance at the behemoth with narrowed eyes. I've always believed there was beauty in everything and everyone, but I see now that I was wrong. You are without a hint of it. Vain, pathetic dragon. The behemoth puffed itself up. I will have your beauty for myself. My whole purpose is to rule you. Never! I will never bow to you! Elderon stamped one large forelimb. Elderon is a glorious dragon. You are nothing, Lana added. All of you will bow. All of you, especially you, Raziel, the behemoth chuckled. Scylla glanced towards Raziel then. Its expression was one of controlled anger. Scylla's tail thrashed across the ground. The blue dragon was outraged by this usurper's words. Raziel, however, felt an icy calm. This was bluster. If the behemoth had anything up its sleeve, it was to delay and try to lure the other dragons back to it. Raziel would not allow this. Surround it, Raziel commanded its kin. No longer were these dragons outsiders or invaders or enemies. They were kin, as Mephis had named them. More than allies or friends, they were family. Iolaire and Caden entering their lives had brought that home to Raziel, and now the behemoth had clarified Raziel's thinking. With pleasure, Mephis said. 
Mephis, proud and tall and wreathed in poisonous smoke, walked directly past the behemoth to get to the far side. The behemoth and Mephis eyed one another like the apex predators they were. But while Mephis gleamed with strength, the behemoth was murky with guile. The behemoth's tail suddenly shot towards Mephis's side, but magma coated it, and the behemoth let out a shrill scream. Elias turned to Zippel. Quiet as a mouse, despite its huge size, the red dragon had risen up on silent wings and taken its shot to protect Mephis. The green dragon lifted an eyebrow in surprise. Raziel fully expected Mephis to claim that Zippel's action was unneeded, that it had everything under control. But things truly had changed. You are the one alone now, behemoth, Mephis hissed as gouts of poison poured from its jaws. No one to protect you, none to care when you fall. And if the behemoth's tail had been fast to strike, the green dragon's tail was faster. It slammed into the behemoth's right forelimb, knocking it out from under the heaving body. The behemoth staggered and went down with a boom. Mephis did not press the attack. It and Zippel made their way to the opposite side of the behemoth and turned to face Raziel. The others began to fan out as well. Scylla and Sephira stalked along the outer sides of the circle around the behemoth. Mist obscured most of Sephira's body, except for its eyes that glinted and never left the behemoth. Scylla's mermaid-like tail swished dangerously back and forth as if preparing to leap. Evren crackled with light as it took a spot by Scylla's side. Elderon and Lana moved as one to fill in next to Sephira. All that was left was for Raziel to take its place in the circle and send the behemoth to whatever was beyond this place and hope it stayed there for a very long time. Raziel did not know if the other dragons would join them or if fear would hold them back. Raziel had its kin. That would be enough to do what needed to be done. Yet Raziel hoped the others would join them, would free themselves from the behemoth's evil and slavery. It was then that the big yellow dragon bumbled into Raziel's view, following after Lana as if it were attached to the turquoise dragon on a string. The others let out snuffled sounds of alarm. The yellow dragon looked back and forth between its formerly enslaved brethren and Lana. The desire to go after the turquoise dragon was so strong, but fear had the titanic yellow being hesitating. The behemoth's gaze swung towards these others that still hunkered down behind Raziel. It smiled. It clearly had hopes for them, too. Come, join us, Raziel said to these others. The titanic gray dragon shifted. Raziel imagined that at one time it had been a strong fighter as brave and arrogant as Mephis was at times. Its head lifted up at Raziel's words. It was not a command. It was an offer. These dragons had been abused too much to demand they join. Shake off your mental shackles. Reclaim your lives, Raziel urged. Vazeth took a step forward, but then stopped. She grimaced as if angry by her indecision. Against me and mine, the behemoth is nothing. Add your strength to ours, and we may be able to send the behemoth away forever, Raziel stated. Send me away? Bah! They are mine. They are me. If I am gone, what are they? The behemoth challenged. Nothing. Let me prove it to you. Hi, guys. It's Wraith, author and narrator of the gay dragon shifter fiction podcast, Dragon's Reign. This story ends at 140 chapters, which means that the last episode is coming very soon. But don't worry, I am turning another of my serial stories into the next season of this podcast. And the best way to find out what it will be is to subscribe to my YouTube channel. After the last Dragon's Reign episode, watch for the post-story live stream, beautiful new artwork, and trailers for the new story, and maybe even some behind-the-scenes content. I am sad to let Dragon's Reign go, but very excited to bring you the next chapter, so to speak, of paranormal gay romance. Raziel felt the vibrations like the coming of a storm. All of its kin lifted their heads and sniffed the air 
is that they sense danger. Mephis shook its head, snorting out more poison. Magma burst from Zippel's lips. Light flashed from Everin's jaws. Storm clouds built above them as Scylla called upon the rain. Lana added its voice to the storm. Zephyra reared up while Elderon gave Lana cover. At first, Razil could not understand where these vibrations were coming from. The behemoth's jaws were closed. It did not appear to be making any sounds. Its eyes were half shut, as if it were about to take a nap. This was odd compared to its earlier words. But that was when the others started to move. The one step that Vazeth had made became two, then three. The titanic yellow dragon that had nearly followed Lana was also moving, but not towards the turquoise dragon, but to the behemoth. It's calling to them, Raziel, Scylla shouted. My skin crawls, make it stop, Elderon yelled, covering its body with its golden wings. Ah, my ears bleed with it, Lana cried and shook its head violently. If they join with it again, we've lost everything, Zephyra added its voice to the others. Take it down! We need to take it down! Zippel shouted. But Raziel knew that this wouldn't be enough. The other dragons would be left vulnerable forever. They would be half given over to the behemoth if they destroyed it now. You are the king of kings, Raziel. Not just of us, but of all dragon kind. Even the behemoth bows to you, Mephis said to the black dragon. Show them who you are, Raziel. And after all this time, when it had been Valerius and Raziel cutting Alarion and Mephis down for not recognizing this fact, it would be Mephis now reminding Raziel of its place, giving it the strength to act. Raziel opened its massive jaws and let out a bellow. The ground shook. The air seemed to quiver in response. The lightning slashed through the sky. The very realm seemed to go still and quiet and listened. The other dragons stopped in their tracks. They shook their heads as if trying to clear them from cobwebs or sleep. They shifted uneasily. One of them let out a sad, small cry. Waziel drew itself up to its full height. Its wings spread wide. The clouds that Scylla and Zephyra had drawn parted, and the helix that had appeared above reach appeared here. At first, it contained only the red and the white strands as it had on Earth. But Raziel understood it now. It was their unity, all of them, not just Raziel and Iolares. I am Raziel, king of kings, dragon eternal, your sword and shield, Raziel intoned. Every dragon, including the behemoth, looked at it with a kind of shocked awe. Later, Scylla would tell Raziel that its body was limbed in a golden fire and seemed to grow so large that its shadow covered all the land. Raziel would believe this, not because it was strong on its own, but finally it realized where its true strength lay, together. Raziel continued, You belong not to the behemoth, but to yourselves. You are dragons, strong and free. Every dragon head was lifted now. Wings fluttered, eyes blinked rapidly. Raziel could feel the magic in its words, another gift. Another great power was coming out of it. Wield. We are kin. We are together. We create unity. None of us are alone, Raziel intoned. Scylla reared up and another strand of stars joined the helix. Zephyra followed and another strand of the helix was joined. Evren, Lana, and Elderon all followed suit and the strands appeared and thunked into place. Zippel nodded at Raziel and lifted its snout into the heavens, and its strand joined the others. Finally, Mephis met Raziel's gaze. It inclined its head and let out a roar. We are one! Unity! Mephis cried. Unity! Unity! Wield us as one, Raziel! The others took up the chant. The behemoth snarled and spat and snapped at the air all around it, as if the spinning helix and all it represented was already attacking the behemoth. Raziel felt it reaching for the others again, but Raziel slammed a mental shield between them and the behemoth. But it was unnecessary, for the display had snapped something loose in the other dragons. The yellow dragon gave out a call and another strand snapped into place. 
It lumbered over to Elderon and Lana. Elderon allowed it to stand on the other side of Lana. Vosith was next. She let out a roar as she took to the air and then landed, surprisingly, right next to Mephis. The green dragon lifted an eyebrow. It had ripped her head off in battle, but she didn't seem to hold a grudge. For all Raziel knew, she found that an acceptable gesture of friendship. Her strand joined the rest. Unity, Vosith said. The others tumbled after. One after another, all of them were joyous. Their cries of joining were happy and not angry war cries. With every one of them becoming a part of the unity, Raziel fed stronger and stronger. The last dragon to join was the titanic Cray. It slowly walked past Raziel and gave a bow of its head before its strand also appeared in the helix above. The final strand. Unity, Grey Dragon said. It took its place in the circle. There was only one empty slot left just for Raziel. Raziel joined its kin and looked upon the behemoth. The hydra was now crouched down, chin practically pressed to the ground, tail whipping back and forth frantically, claws digging into the dry, crumbly earth as if it could burrow its way out of this. But no, there was no way out. Unless, behemoth for your crimes, there should be no quarter given, Raziel intoned. You have enslaved our kin and harmed shifters and humans alike. If you wish me to beg for a quick death, waste not your breath, Raziel, the behemoth hissed. Raziel almost sighed. No, but if you seek forgiveness, if you seek unity, you too do not need to be alone. The behemoth stopped for a moment. Then its crafty, dirty yellow eyes narrowed. You wish me to pledge allegiance to you like these others. Promise to bend the neck to you, Raziel. And harm no others, yes, behemoth. Do this and we will aid you. We will heal your body and soul, Raziel offered. Mephis lifted an eyebrow. Even Scylla looked a little surprised by Raziel's offer. But Saphira nodded, understanding. One chance for forgiveness. But if it was not taken... Oh, we can be one. You will be mine. All of you will be mine, the behemoth screamed, and the vibrations spread out from it. But they were not heard. Unity had been attained. The behemoth had been able to reach one dragon that was on its own after hurting it. But they were not alone any longer. They were united. The behemoth could not reach any of them. So you have chosen. Destruction, Raziel said. What? What is happening? I cannot reach. There's there's nothing. No answer, you are. No! No! The behemoth shrieked. Goodbye, behemoth, Raziel said, and used wield. Every one of the dragon's powers was Raziel's to command. Raziel had them use their highest, most powerful gifts all at once on the behemoth. Living poison from Mephis, sunstrike from Evren, storm from Scylla, mist dagger from Zephyra, squall from Lana, molten core from Eldoran, volcano from Zippel. The other dragons added powers Raziel had never seen before, and for which he would have had to discover their names. But finally, Raziel used Planet Strike, which caused a huge mass of molten rock to slam on top of the behemoth, who had already seemingly disappeared under the other powers. The explosion that had caused the crater the first time, and would have leveled most of Valerius and Raziel's territory, came. The world went white. Raziel felt as if it were in the void for a moment, where there was nothing. No land, no sea, no body. But then the world came back. The whole realm shook. The dragons nearly lost their balance as the center of the circle had been turned into a molten, burning mass. The crater was hundreds of feet deeper and wider now. So many would have died but for them doing this here. When they all recovered to look at where the behemoth had been, they saw hydra bones. Just a few, slowly being eaten away by the lava but nothing else. The behemoth was gone. For now. There was a long silence as the dragons stared at where their fallen foe had been. It was over. All were freed. They returned to their bonded ones, those that had them, 
and the others to their lairs. Raziel lifted its head as the other dragons looked at him with eyes full of thankfulness. Raziel snorted. We all did this, not just me, Raziel reminded them. Now you are free. Will we see you again? The titanic gray dragon asked. Yes, Raziel said. I bid you to find your human bonded ones. Join us in the human realm. But my lair is always open to you regardless. There is one missing, Vazeth remarked, looking up at the now completed helix. My mate, Iolair. You know of the white dragon. It was trapped as you once were, Raziel said. It escaped, the titanic yellow dragon whispered. I remember. So strong. Yes, it is with Caden, the mate of my bonded one, Valerius. They brought the behemoth back here for us, Raziel explained. So brave to face the behemoth alone, the titanic yellow dragon murmured. Iolair was not alone. It had Caden, Raziel answered. You will understand what that means in time. Speaking of which, Scylla said with a touch of anxiety, we need to return ourselves, Raziel. I worry for my Esme. She will have put herself in the center of the fight. My May will have fought hard as well, Zipple said. Valerian will have been by Valerius' side in the thick of things. They need us, Mephis said. They definitely need us, Lana agreed, even as the titanic yellow dragon made eyes at it. Tez is a man of the people. He will have put himself between the innocents and death, Elderon cried. Yes, yes, we must be with them. They are in danger without us, Raziel agreed, needing Valerius so badly that it actually hurt with the desire for him. Raziel flapped its mighty wings and took off. Remember, Raziel called to the others, come find us. Then they were streaking towards the lair like eight missiles. They formed the V-shape that they had when they had flown over the skies of Earth. But this time, they were truly united, and this feeling would not end when they reached their destination. I hope you're enjoying Dragon's Reign so far. Dragon's Reign is free for you to enjoy, but not free for us to make. There is a whole team working with me for audio editing, artwork, graphic design, and custom music. Most YouTube channels and podcasts have sponsors and take ads, but because of the kind of content we make, we can't run ads or get sponsors. Instead, we have other ways you can support me and the team behind this gay romance audiobook. One easy way is to buy or borrow my books from Amazon. They are all gay romance set in alternative worlds with vampires or shifters and other magical beings. You may not know that even if you borrow books with your Kindle Unlimited subscription at Amazon, they are free for you, but they still earn us money. The books are published under the name Ex Aratare, which actually means wraith in Romanian. And if you love audiobooks, you can get professionally narrated versions of every one of my books on audible.com. The link to my author page is in the description below, as well as to the first book of the series I think you'll really like. Thank you so much for your support. People like you enable me and the team to keep writing these stories of gay romance, magic, monsters, and true love and producing this very fun podcast for everyone. Thank you.